Hello dreamers and welcome to The Sleepy Scholar, the podcast that helps you learn in your dreams. I'm Debbie and tonight I have a magical journey in store for you. Before we dive into our tale, I want to remind you to subscribe to The Sleepy Scholar. You can find me on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and everywhere you find your favourite podcasts. I know firsthand how challenging it can be to find restful sleep. Like many of you, I too struggle with those restless nights when sleep seems just out of reach. That's why I created this podcast, to help us all unwind, relax, and drift into a peaceful slumber. Now, let's take a moment to get comfortable. Find a position that feels just right for you, whether you're lying down or sitting back in a cosy chair. Gently close your eyes and take a deep breath in through your nose. Feel your lungs fill with air. Hold it a moment and then slowly exhale through your mouth. Let the day's tensions melt away with each breath. Continue breathing deeply and evenly. Picture yourself standing by a serene river. The river Moy flows gently before you. Its waters shimmering under the soft glow of the setting sun. The air is cool and fresh carrying the subtle scent of wildflowers and the earthy aroma of moss-covered stones. Birds sing softly in the distance and the leaves rustle gently in the breeze. Now, imagine stepping onto Bartra Island a place where the line between the everyday world and the mystical is thin. Feel the soft, warm sand beneath your feet. The sound of waves lapping against the shore is like a soothing lullaby. As you breathe in the tranquil atmosphere, let your mind relax. The island welcomes you with its magical light and the whispering trees. Tonight's story, Lorcan's Temptation, the fairy table of Bartra Island, will take you deeper into this enchanted realm. As you listen, allow yourself to release any lingering thoughts or worries. Let the gentle rhythm of the tale carry you away, like a leaf floating on a calm stream. Relax, unwind, and prepare for an enchanting journey. Let Lorcan's story guide you into a peaceful, dream-filled sleep. Sweet dreams, dear dreamers.
Fado, Fado. In the rugged northwest of Ireland, where the land is a patchwork of emerald fields and colourful boglands, the River Moy winds its way through the lush green countryside. Originating from the misty Ox Mountains in County Sligo, the river meanders gracefully, its waters glistening under the soft glow of the Irish sun. It flows with a gentle, persistent rhythm, as if carrying with it the whispers of old legends and forgotten tales until it finally meets the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean at Kalala Bay. At the mouth of the River Moy lies Bartra Island, a sandy, uninhabited isle that holds an air of enchantment. The island is steeped in history and mystery a place where the veil between the natural and supernatural is thin. Local lore speaks of Bartra as a realm where the fairies or the she roam freely. Their presence felt in the rustling leaves and the shimmering light that dances on the water's surface. Among those who know the Moy well is Lorcan, an elderly fisherman whose weathered face and calloused hands tell tales of a lifetime spent at sea. His eyes, deep and knowing, reflect the wisdom gathered from countless hours on the water, navigating the river's twists and turns and braving the tempests that occasionally sweep through the region. Lorcan's presence commands quiet respect, a testament to his enduring relationship with the river and its many moods. Lorcan is not alone in his ventures. He is accompanied by a tight-knit group of seasoned fishermen, each with their own quirks and superstitions. There's Tig, the youngest among them, always carrying a lucky charm given to him by his grandmother. Porrick, with his bushy beard and infectious laughter, known for his tall tales. And Cullum, the silent observer, whose sharp eyes miss nothing. Together they form a crew bonded by shared experiences and a mutual respect for the river that sustains them. Every Saturday evening, the group embarks on their ritual journey down the River Moy. As they row, their laughter and banter echo across the tranquil surface, a harmonious blend of voices that carry the warmth of camaraderie. They know these waters intimately, each bend and current, and they navigate with ease born of long familiarity. But beneath their jovial exterior, lies a deep-seated reverence for the forces that govern this mystical landscape. An understanding that the river and its secrets are to be respected. This particular evening, however, there was a shift in the atmosphere. The sky, which had been clear and bright, began to darken as clouds gathered on the horizon. 
A cool breeze picked up, rustling the leaves along the riverbank and sending ripples across the water. The men exchanged glances, their jovial spirits tempered by a growing sense of unease. The weather on the moy could change rapidly, and they knew well the power of a sudden storm. Lorcan felt it too, a subtle tension in the air as if the river itself was whispering a warning. He glanced towards Bartra Island, its silhouette growing larger as they approached. The island's reputation as a place of mystery and enchantment seemed more pronounced under the gathering clouds. The usual light-heartedness of their journey was replaced by a contemplative silence, each man lost in his thoughts. The anticipation built as they drew closer to the island. The once gentle flow of the river, now accompanied by the distant rumble of thunder. The skies darkened further, casting a shadow over the landscape. The fisherman's laughter faded into a hushed murmur replaced by the rhythmic splash of the oars and the ominous sounds of the approaching storm. Lorcan's grip on the oars tightened. His senses heightened by the changing conditions. He could feel the weight of the air thick with moisture and foreboding. The storm was coming and with it the unknown that Bartra Island promised. The men knew they had to seek shelter and as the first drops of rain began to fall they rode with renewed urgency towards the island's sandy shores. The dark clouds rolled in swiftly their ominous presence blotting out the last vestiges of daylight. The wind began to howl, a fierce and relentless force that whipped the surface of the river into a frenzy of white caps and swirling eddies. Waves grew choppier slapping against the sides of the boat with increasing ferocity, each impact sending sprays of cold water into the air. The fishermen exchanged urgent glances, their jovial mood now replaced by a collective determination. They knew they had to act quickly. The decision was unanimous. They needed to seek refuge from the storm. With practiced efficiency, they turned the boat towards the familiar yet foreboding shores of Bartra Island. As they rowed frantically, the rhythm of their strokes quickened driven by the escalating intensity of the storm. Thunder rumbled overhead, a deep resonant growl that seemed to shake the very air around them. Lightning streaked across the darkened sky, illuminating the landscape in brief, blinding flashes. Lorcan's heart pounded, not from fear but from a deep sense of urgency and anticipation. He could feel the island's pull, a magnetic force that beckoned him closer. As the boat ground to a halt on the sandy shores, the men leapt out, 
dragging it further up to prevent it from being swept away by the surging waves. Huddling together, the fishermen sought shelter among the sandy banks. Their bodies pressed close for warmth and protection against the biting wind and rain. The air was thick with the smell of salt and earth. The storm's fury all around them. But Lorcan, driven by a mix of curiosity and something more profound, felt a compelling urge to wander off alone. He glanced at his comrades, who were too preoccupied with securing their gear and bracing against the storm to notice his departure. With a final look at the safety of their huddle, he turned and walked away, his footsteps muffled by the sand and the howling wind. The island seemed to call to him, its mysteries just out of reach. Hidden in the shadowy recesses beyond the immediate turmoil of the storm, as Lorcan moved further inland, the sounds of his comrades faded, replaced by the eerie symphony of the natural and supernatural intermingling. The wind seemed to carry whispers, fleeting and indistinct, yet filled with an ancient resonance that sent a shiver down his spine. Seeking solitude, he found himself drawn to a secluded spot where the foliage provided a modicum of shelter from the lashing rain. Here, in the relative quiet, he could hear the rhythmic beating of his heart and the gentle hum of the island's unseen inhabitants. Lorcan's curiosity tempered by years of wisdom, kept him cautious. He knew the stories of Bartra Island, of the fairies and their tricks, yet he felt an undeniable pull to explore, to understand the land that held so many secrets. As he lit his pipe, the glow of the embers cast a faint, comforting light a small beacon against the growing darkness. He took a deep breath, letting the familiar scent of the tobacco calm his nerves. Despite the storm's rage, a strange sense of peace settled over him. Alone on Bartra Island, Lorcan felt the thin veil between worlds more acutely than ever. The boundary between the seen and unseen shifting with each gust of wind and flash of lightning. His adventure had only just begun and with it the promise of encountering the mystical and the unknown. As he ventured further into the heart of the island, the storm seemed to lessen its grip, as if acknowledging his presence and the journey he was about to undertake. The path ahead was uncertain, but Lorcan's spirit was undeterred, driven by a blend of curiosity, respect and an unspoken connection to the ancient land and its ethereal inhabitants. Lorcan's exploration of Bartra Island was like stepping into another world, where time seemed to slow, and the very air hummed with ancient secrets. The sandy banks shifted under his feet, moulded by the relentless tides that whispered of countless stories carried from the ocean's depths. The island was a place of contrasts, 
where the rugged beauty of nature met the eerie stillness of the supernatural. As he wandered further, the foliage thinned, revealing more of the island's sandy expanse. Shadows danced and flickered in the dim light cast by the gnarled trees that loomed over him. The ground beneath was soft, almost yielding, as if it held memories of those who had walked there before. Lorcan moved with a cautious reverence, his senses heightened to every sound and movement, aware that he was not alone in this mystical place. Then, as if conjured from a dream, he stumbled upon a sight that left him breathless. In a small clearing, nestled between the twisting roots of ancient trees, stood a table. But this was no ordinary table. Covered with an exquisite cloth, it depicted every bird in the air and every fish in the sea, their images woven with such lifelike detail that they seemed ready to take flight or swim away. The cloth shimmered with a subtle glow, catching the light in a way that made the creatures appear to move and breathe. Lorcan approached cautiously, his eyes wide with wonder. The table was laden with crystal goblets, each brimming with rich cream and amber whiskey that glinted invitingly. The vessels themselves were delicate and intricately designed their surfaces catching and refracting the light into a spectrum of colours. Lorcan could smell the sweet, intoxicating aroma of the drinks, mingling with the earthy scent of the island, creating a heady mix that made his head spin. But it was the golden purses that truly captivated him. Each purse, tied with a thin gold cord and shaped like a large ball, was filled with glittering sovereigns that shone with a warm inviting glow. The gold was almost hypnotic, reflecting Lorcan's wide-eyed gaze as he marvelled at the wealth before him. It was a temptation unlike any he had ever faced. A silent invitation to partake in the fairy's treasures. As he stood there, torn between curiosity and caution, Lorcan noticed movement at the periphery of his vision. Turning slowly, he saw rabbits, dozens of them, frolicking joyfully around the table. Their presence added to the surreal enchantment of the scene. The rabbits with their soft fur and twitching noses seemed unbothered by his presence, as if they too were part of the island's otherworldly charm. The rabbits played and leapt with an infectious joy their energy a stark contrast to the stillness of the enchanted table. They darted between the trees, their movements quick and fluid, leaving trails of the sand that were quickly erased by the shifting ground. Lorcan watched them, a smile tugging at the corners of his mouth their carefree antics reminding him of the simple pleasures of life. 
Yet amidst the enchantment, Lorcan felt a subtle undercurrent of danger. The island with its mystical beauty and allure was also a place of power and ancient magic. The stories of the she and their tricks echoed in his mind, a reminder that everything here was not as it seemed. He recalled the old sayings, the warnings passed down through generations. To partake in fairies' feast was to risk being trapped in their world forever. Lorcan took a deep breath, the cool air filling his lungs and clearing his thoughts. Despite the overwhelming temptation, he knew he had to remain cautious. He whispered a silent prayer, invoking the protection of his ancestors and the strength of his faith. As he stood there watching the rabbits and marvelling at the fairy table, he felt a profound sense of connection to the land and its hidden magic. The storm continued to rage around him, yet within this enchanted clearing there was a sense of calm and timelessness. Lorcan knew his journey on Bartra Island was far from over. The mysteries of the table and the presence of the fairies were just the beginning. With a mix of wonder and caution, he prepared to face whatever lay ahead, determined to respect the ancient magic while seeking to understand its place in the world he called home. As Lorcan stood before the enchanting table, a profound internal struggle took hold of him. The allure of the fairy feast and the glittering wealth was almost overwhelming. The crystal goblets, filled with rich cream and whiskey, seemed to beckon him closer, their intoxicating scent mingling with the earthy aroma of the island. The golden purses with their glittering sovereigns promised riches beyond his wildest dreams. It was a temptation designed to captivate any mortal and Lorcan was no exception. Yet amidst the dazzling allure, Lorcan's mind was a tempest of conflicting thoughts. He recalled the old stories, the cautionary tales of the she that had been passed down through generations. These tales spoke of the dangers of consuming fairy food the risks of succumbing to the enchantments of the other world. He remembered his grandmother's voice, firm and insistent, warning him of the fairies' tricks and the perils of their realm. Lorcan's thoughts drifted to the old legends of the Shi, the ancient fairy folk descended from the Thuha de Danann. These beings were known to inhabit the mounds and hills of Ireland, existing in a realm parallel to the human world. They were neither entirely good nor entirely evil, but their enchantments were powerful and their motives often inscrutable. Mortals who partook of their food or drink were said to be at risk of being trapped in the other world, never to return to their own lives. Echoes of these stories resonated in his mind, each one a vivid reminder of the dangers he faced. There was the tale of the young man who had danced with the fairies, 
only to find that a single night with them had cost him a hundred years in the mortal world. Another told of a woman who had sipped from a fairy cup, only to lose her sense of self and wander aimlessly forever caught between two worlds. Lorcan's heart raced as he weighed his options. The allure of the fairy table was undeniable, a siren call to his senses. But the wisdom of the elders and the lessons of his youth held him back. He knew that the fairy's gifts were often double-edged, bringing both wonder and peril in equal measure. The wealth before him could provide a lifetime of comfort, but at what cost? The risks of being ensnared by the she, of losing his freedom and his connection to the mortal world, were too great to ignore. He took a step back, forcing himself to breathe deeply and think clearly. The joyful frolicking of the rabbits around the table seemed to mock his dilemma, their carefree nature a stark contrast to his inner turmoil. The storm outside the enchanted clearing continued to rage, its fury a reminder of the unpredictable power of the natural and supernatural forces at play. Lorcan's gaze lingered on the crystal goblets and the golden purses, the temptation as strong as ever. But his resolve began to harden. He was a man of the river, grounded in the rhythms of the natural world. The stories of his ancestors were not just tales to entertain, but lessons to guide and protect. He could not ignore the wisdom that had been passed down to him, the deep-rooted understanding that the fairy's gifts came with a price. With a final resolute breath, Lorcan turned away from the table. He whispered another silent prayer, seeking the strength to resist the enchantment and the courage to face whatever lay ahead. The pull of the other world was strong, but his connection to his own world, to the river, and to the land he knew so well was stronger. As he moved away, the air around him seemed to shift, the sense of enchantment lifting slightly. He felt a weight leave his shoulders, replaced by clarity and determination. The table with its dazzling temptations faded into the background and Lorcan set his sights on finding his comrades and returning to the safety of their boat. Curiosity urged him to glance back one last time. To his great surprise, the table had vanished. The elaborate feast, the shimmering cloth and the frolicking rabbits were all gone, as if they had never existed. The clearing was empty, save for the natural elements of the island. It was a stark reminder of the ephemeral and illusory nature of fairy magic, a powerful testament to the stories he had heard all his life. Lorcan stood still for a moment, absorbing the reality of what had just happened. The enchanted table had been a test a manifestation of the island's ancient magic meant to tempt and ensnare. His decision to turn away, to reject the allure of the she, had broken the spell, returning the island to its natural state. 
With the storm still raging around him, Lorcan felt a deep sense of relief. He had resisted the temptation, honouring the cautionary tales of his ancestors. This experience had left him with a renewed appreciation for the old ways and the unseen forces that inhabited the world around him. Determined to find his comrades and share his tale, Lorcan made his way back through the shifting sands and the twisted roots of Bartra Island. The path ahead was uncertain, but his spirit was bolstered by the knowledge that he had faced the magic of the she and emerged unscathed. The mystical aura of the island lingered in his thoughts, a reminder of the delicate balance between the seen and unseen and the power of faith and wisdom in navigating the unknown. As Lorcan began his journey back to his comrades, he was suddenly aware of a haunting strain of violin music drifting through the air. The melody was both enchanting and unsettling, weaving through the wind and rain like a spectral whisper. Each note seemed to carry a piece of the island's magic echoing through the trees and resonating within him. Lorcan paused for a moment, the music fading into an eerie silence as if the island itself held its breath. When he resumed his steps, the melody picked up again, following him like a shadow. The interplay between the music and the natural sounds of the storm created an otherworldly atmosphere, a reminder that he was still within the realm of the she. The path back was fraught with the surreal, the music growing and fading with his movements. Lorcan's heart raced, the melody intertwining with the rhythm of the rain and the whispering wind. Each pause brought silence, and each step reignited the haunting strains, reinforcing the ethereal nature of his surroundings. Finally, the familiar sight of the boat and his huddled comrades came into view. With a final, determined stride, Lorcan reached the safety of the boat. As he did, the haunting music began to fade, the notes lingering in the air before dissolving into the storm. The tempest, which had raged so fiercely, began to mysteriously abate the wind dying down and the rain easing to a gentle drizzle. Lorcan's return to his comrades brought a palpable wave of relief. The men who had been anxiously awaiting his return greeted him with a mix of concern and curiosity. Their eyes reflected the storm's lingering intensity but also the deep bond that connected them. As Lorcan settled back into the boat, the sense of urgency began to dissipate, replaced by a quiet anticipation for the tale he was about to share. Gathered closely, with the storm now a distant rumble, Lorcan recounted his otherworldly encounter. He described the fairy table, the exquisite cloth depicting birds and fish, the crystal goblets brimming with cream and whiskey, and the golden purses filled with sovereigns. He spoke of the joyful rabbits and the haunting strains of the violin that followed him through the island. His comrades listened intently, 
their expressions shifting from wonder to apprehension. Horik's usual laughter was replaced by a thoughtful frown, while Tig clutched his grandmother's charm more tightly, his eyes wide with a mix of fear and fascination. Colum's silent, observant gaze never left Larkin, absorbing every detail of the extraordinary experience. As Lorcan finished his tale, a somber silence settled over the group. They marvelled at his fortitude, recognising the strength it took to resist the temptations of the she. The narrow escape from the fairy's enchantments was not lost on them. They understood well the grave consequences that could have befallen Lorcan had he succumbed to the lure of the fairy feast. Their reflections were tinged with a mix of respect and lament. While they admired Lorcan's wisdom in turning away from the enchanted table, they couldn't help but feel a pang of regret for the missed opportunity of the wealth it promised. The golden purses, shimmering with sovereigns, represented a temptation that was hard to ignore and the men silently pondered what might have been. Yet amidst their reflections there was a shared understanding of the greater danger. They knew the stories, the warnings about the she and the risks of interacting with their world. Lorcan's tale reinforced the lessons they had learned throughout their lives, that some temptations, no matter how alluring, are best left untouched. As the fishermen began their journey home, the evening had grown calm. The storm's fury had passed, leaving a tranquil stillness in its wake. The river, once wild and choppy, now flowed smoothly reflecting the soft light of the setting sun. A thoughtful silence enveloped the boat. Each man lost in his own reflections of the extraordinary events they had just witnessed. The men cast furtive glances back towards Bartra Island, their minds still grappling with the encounter. The mystical experience had instilled a newfound respect for the old ways and the unseen forces that shaped their land. They understood now more than ever the power and presence of the she, and the delicate balance between the human world and the supernatural. As the boat glided towards their familiar shores, the men felt a renewed sense of unity and purpose. They had faced the unknown and returned with a story that would be told and retold, a testament to the enduring power of Irish folklore. And so, dear dreamers, the tale of Lorcan and Bartra Island comes to an end. It is a story of temptation and the moral strength required to resist it out of respect for tradition and the unseen forces that shape our world. As you reflect on this story, may you find comfort in the rich tapestry of Irish mythology, embracing the lessons and the magic it brings. As you drift into peaceful sleep, let the echoes of Lorcan's adventure guide your dreams. Remember the power of folklore and the wisdom it carries, connecting us to our past and enriching our understanding of the world around us. Good night, and may the whispers of the old ways bring you tranquility and wonder. E Hawaii, August Colossal.